Hi everyone, I'm here to do a tarot review today and it's from a, a fairly new deck that I have got in the mail. It was a pleasant surprise because I don't remember ordering it, but um, from the reviews that I've seen of this deck, a lot of people say they weren't first drawn to it, um, they weren't sure they would like it, and then it's now become their favorite deck. So I'm hoping to uh, sort of share this deck with you and see if you'll like it as well. So I actually follow the artist of uh, this deck on Instagram. He has um, a lovely Instagram page. So it's Ricardo Ca Cavallo. Cavallo is his name. And this is the Tarot del Fu Fuego. Um, so this is, as many other re uh, reviews have said, this is not a deck for the light of heart. Um, and it is, he's a tattoo, or, well he does tattoo inspired artistry. So I'm just trying to get this deck open. So it just comes in a regular old box, um, as you can see, and it's extremely colorful. Now I like it because it's actually um, one of the smaller decks that I've uh, had the chance to use. So this is what the back of the cards look like. As you can see he's very colorful. Um, they're very, like from what I've been working with, he's uh, extremely exciting in what he does. Lots of color. Uh, in this deck, you'll notice first thing that there's lots of eyeballs, lots of fire, and I find with this deck, you know, people have been saying, oh, you know, the card stock is okay, like, they do that kind of review. Like, it's a thin um, card, but it's nice and firm. Um, it's not as thick as some of my other decks, but that's okay. And like I said, it's a fairly small deck. I'm used to bigger decks, so it's very easy to shuffle. And you can pretty much shuffle it right out of the box. Now, I did have the book here somewhere that comes with it. But the book is just your generic, you know, here's what this card means. Here's what that card means. Um, just the generic meanings. It's not a, bo a book geared specifically towards his art um, and why he drew what he drew kind of thing or the theme or anything like that. Um, but I find with his cards that a lot of his cards have a lot of meaning in them. So, like, I just randomly pulled the full four of wands here. So you've got four wands. They've all got eyeballs on them. You'll see there's lots of eyes. So, you know, each card is sort of insightful in a way. And there's so much to read on each card that you'll find you can almost just do one card readings. Um, and I'm hoping to use this card for the next full moon, wherein I do full moon readings, because it is the next full moon uh, in June is in Sagittarius, which is all about fire. It's a fire sign. So you've got this um, Four of Wands and you've got the fire here. They're on fire because fours I always say you can't level up in life until you see a four and this is sort of that the fire is now going get ready um, To level up in life and you can see that there's flowers that are growing in behind the fire and they're just sprouting because that's what fours are about. They're about finding that stability and then being able to grow from there and move on to that next level. Um, fours are the foundation number and you need to have a good foundation in order to move on kind of thing. So I just find that like there's so much to see in just that card, right? So then we've got, um, let me pull another card here. So we've got the Five of Cups. So there's the Five of Cups. Lots of color, lots of fire. Um, not as many eyeballs in this one, which is interesting because the Five of Cups, you know, fives are always transition numbers. Cups are about emotion. And it's interesting, instead of eyeballs, he's kind of got a lot of leaves here, right? And, you know, growth, greenery, that sort of thing. He's got the Five Cups and he's got different things in each cup. Like there's a branch here and a three-eyed sort of snake type thing here and this looks like it could be sort of a sea creature of some kind but it's it's such a colorful deck um, there's the four of cups there's so much to take in and you'll notice like it's a very solid like solid building right four cups at each corner 
you know, representing the growth that's about to happen from this four. And then a pond and a big old pussy willow coming out that's been um, growing and blossoming. And then there's the sun. The four is actually in one of the suns. There's two suns. So, you know, extra happy days maybe kind of thing. Um, let me see what else if we can find a major arcana card here. Um, oh, I like this nine of wands though before we move on to the major arcana. Because the nine of wands, nines are always that completion number. So I really like this guy. He's climbing the fence, right? Up to, up the tree. The nine of wands. So these are the wands. The ladder could also represent some of the wands. And he's about to get this glass of water to either quench his thirst or to put out some of the fires. Whatever it might be. He's got some roses growing at the bottom here. Which is a very powerful, um flower and then you've got this guy this sort of circus guy but he's like the goddess or the god janus um who's the new year god that looks forward and backward so i thought this was really cool this nine of wands it means that you're about to quench your thirst you're about to reap what you the reward that you've been working so hard on but you're you're able to kind of cross that barrier you're able to look back and learn from your past whether there's been good things you've learned or mistakes you've learned from but you're also looking forward and you keep going up that ladder and your your journey's about to end so just in that one card there's so much in there so I wanted to share that with you now let me see if I again let me see if I got distracted by that four of wands <laughs> um if I can find um well, the Ace of Cups, okay, I'm distracted again. <laughs> so it's a breast and it's got the, uh, um, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight stars, sort of a constellation there. And of course it's pouring milk into the cup. There's two roses, because of course roses very much are the love flower, especially red roses and pink roses as well, because pink is actually the color of love. Red is the color of lust, if you're doing candle magic or anything like that. And then you've got this cup with the milk that's filling the cup, and it's a new beginning, so a new relationship is coming in. Um, you've got sort of pink surrounding it, and the cup has roots coming out of it, so it's setting down roots, you know, that sort of thing. There's a lot of imagery there, and again, you know, try not to get distracted. It's hard not to get distracted with his um, work. So you've got the Knave of Swords there. Lots of imagery there. You know, the Crown of Flowers there. Um, what else do we have? Ten of Swords. Queen of Wands. There she is. She's like more like a tree spirit there. You know, and able to help you out and move you forward. So, like each card, I've been finding, oh, the Empress, here's the Empress, she's very cool. So the Empress, she's got a bee covering her face, so kind of like, bees are very much about abundance, and that's what the Empress is about. She's, you know, in the pregnant um, stage, and she's sort of squatting, ready to give birth, and the bee is sort of like, she's the queen bee. She's got, um, she's squatting over the earth. So she's sort of acting as a, um, a earth mother almost. There's a rose here and then there's another flower here. And then we've got a cup of milk over here, sorry. And even this jug of milk. Milk is, you know, about abundance, the land of milk and honey, thus bees and milk, right? And she's just sort of giving birth over the earth here protecting it that sort of thing and then we've got f a fire wall or it looks like almost a log that's on fire but has roots at the same time and then we've got the another flower over here another rose and lots and lots of bees because of course she's the queen bee and this is sort of their hive where they kind of congregate and come home to so there's a lot it's very colorful it is a hard deck to I wouldn't recommend this as a beginner deck by any means but if you like his art you're gonna love this deck and it's very um tattoo inspired almost the knight of cups here lots of fire 
there's the Ace of Pentacles, you know, swirling around with fire and red hands and skulls and locks and envelopes torn down in the middle there. So, you know, that envelope torn, you know, could be a message that's coming, a message that might be delayed, but it's an ace. So it's probably coming as opposed to being delayed. Uh, four of Pentacles, you know, again, it he's got the coins over his eyes, so fours are about rest. And if you think of the Four of Pentacles, um, it's a growth spurt for your money. But first, you kind of have to make some sacrifice, perhaps. Or maybe you have to lie down and rest. You've got the pitchfork up here. And that could be taken a couple of different ways. So the pitchfork often... People associate it with the devil, um, and devil in tarot means attachments, but the pitchfork is also used in fertility rites, um, in very old fertility rites, pitchforks and brooms. That's why brooms and pitchforks became the tools of the devil and witches and stuff like that, right? So pitchforks are also that fertility, so that growth that might be happening. Now, whether he knew when he was painting that on there that that's what that's about who knows right we've got the magician and you'll notice he's got red across his face a red stripe and he's got red uh a red hand red hands here and up here kind of thing right so red in the spiritual world often represents knowledge so the magician is our first teacher in the tarot and he's got all the tools laid out. He's got the cup here and the athame. He's got some dice. <laughs> um, so he doesn't necessarily have all the tools like the suits, like traditionally. So this deck does veer a little bit. It has the spirit of the Rider weight deck, um, definitely. And it follows, you know, like the Major Arcana are all the same. Um, and the suits are all the same. And but just in the artistry, there's a slight deviation a little bit uh, away from what the, some of the traditional meanings might be for each of the cards from the Rider Waite Smith system. But I, I like the deviation. And like I said, I've done some reviews of people um, or seen some reviews of this deck, and they all seem to say this is definitely a deck for not for the faint of heart. It's a very exciting, fiery deck. I've done a couple of readings with this deck because I bonded it to me. Um, and I do find that, yeah, it's very interesting what comes up. And there is so much imagery on every card. And there's a couple things that could go a couple of different ways. Like the Fool here, for instance. He's got, so there's some eyeballs here. There's an eyeball here. Of course, he's got his own eyes. And then there's two what looks like googly eyes in the in the um, sky. And when I first saw those, I'm like, oh, well, that's appropriate. He's the fool. So, of course, he has googly eyes, right? And, but then also I kind of took a look and I say, okay, so there's eyeballs above him. So maybe he's having some true insight. He's got the eye on his uh, hobo pack here as he's moving forward into his new adventure, whatever it might be. The dog here has a time, like a hourglass on him. So maybe the time is ripe right now for that insight, for that movement forward. Yes, go forward. He's got bells here. Now bells could be he's celebrating going on this new adventure and he's playing some music, you know, jingles as he walks kind of thing. It could also be because the fool is an innocent, nothing evil is going to touch him because uh, bells are very cleansing. There's actually a bell ritual that I've done in circle with some of my fellow witches. And it's a, it's often done in the spring because it's, you know, all cleansing and stuff. And, and it's connected to fairies as well because it's an air element. The bell is an air element type of instrument. And we just ring the bells to cleanse our auras, to cleanse our souls, to cleanse the area. So this could be a cleansing thing as well. And it keeps his area clean because it, they're always ringing as he's walking. Now these two, getting back to the googly eyes, if you really look, they could also be the phases of the moon. So a new moon and, you know, a waning moon, that sort of thing, right? So 
depending on what phase you're in. I like that he kind of, these could be seen as moons and there's sun and stars, so everything is there. Like there's everything in the sky that could be there. And then there's a volcano erupting. So, you know, time to get moving sort of thing. There's a mountains, it looks sort of like a mountain here. So there's more mountains to climb, but you can do it kind of thing. Um, again, lots of fire. There's what looks like a little bit of a house here, upside down. So maybe, you know, you've had to have something push you out of the way. A lot of times, like, when we decide to go on a new journey or start a new project or do something new in our life, make some kind of shift, the universe sort of makes us so uncomfortable that we can't help but move, right? Because sometimes we spend a lot of time in the, the thinking and the planning stages of these shifts that we're planning on doing and wanting to do, but we never actually move. So maybe his house had to literally turn upside down for him to go, yeah, I need to go on this trip and, you know, learn something new or start something new or whatever. And his ever faithful dog is with him. And he's got the sun and the moon on each leg. Um, he's got a little bell on his, on each of his wrists as well. So he's definitely keeping, you know, the area cleansed. I don't know what these are. These kind of look like little badminton, um, you know, the ball that you hit or back and forth, uh, birdies, you know, so maybe they're birds. I don't know. Um, but they're sort of everywhere. Like, um, on the magician, he's got three yellow ones and he, and one white one. So they kind of look like little ghosts or little birds. I'm not sure what they are. I wish there was a book that came with this. So it kind of maybe explained a little bit better what, what the mindset of the artist was, um, and why he put some of the things that he put there. Um, because I'm hoping, you know, a lot of it was deliberate as opposed to just purely accidental. Again, there's stars and more of those birds. Maybe they're shooting stars. I don't know. They could be all, you know, all different things. And I think, you know, although there's no book that comes with it, you can interpret it. This deck really makes you stretch your intuitive mind. Because again, like I say, it has the spirit of Rider Waite, but it does deviate. And there's some really interesting, odd little things added in um, that, you know, aren't on other decks. And it kind of makes you query, okay, why is this here? You know, what, what am I, what's my intu intuition kind of saying this represents or whatever, like the fact that there's four suns on the 10 of cups, right? Um, that could mean something. And in a reading, it might pop up for you as to what that means. Sometimes a lot of the things are upside down, right? There's flowers growing up. There's nine cups upside down and it's raining down on them, you know, what does that mean? It's not the traditional necessarily nine of cups because there's different um, sort of interpretations. Now this eight of cups is interesting because you've got things sprouting out of the cups and you've got the vines kind of grabbing onto that pillar and tearing off the top of it. Very reminiscent of the tower card to me when I first saw this. Um, and the fire, of course, is starting kind of thing. So this eight of cups, are we, you know, eight sometimes are opportunities, but they're also about adjustments. So are we toppling something, some pillar of truth that, you know, we swore by or some um, perceived perception that, you know, we thought was a truth. It's, it's okay to challenge your truths kind of thing. So this might be one of those Let's challenge your truth. What do you believe is a truth? Because sometimes we get stuck in, you know, our own truths only to find out later it's just our perception and it's, you know, a, not necessarily a truth and, um, uh, you know, an irrevocable kind of truth kind of thing. This is interesting too. We've got the Six of Cups and you've got the different stages of hatching here. You got fire here and then in the other cups you've got rain you've got the number six and the sun and then this looks actually more like a shooting star because it actually has little points on it so it does look like a shooting star um so that's an interesting one you're going through these stages of hatching and maybe a little baptism by fire kind of thing 
right? And then we've got the Knave of Cups. So the Knave, this one is, appears to be female. Um, so this is the page also, because Knaves and pages are kind of the same thing. And uh, this Knave is bathing in a milk bath. Those are great. I used to do, I used to own a spa and we did the Cleopatra milk bath for our clients and it was awesome. And I love the beautiful long red hair with stars just everywhere. And then again, this mountain with the eye in it and just beautiful flowers over here, right? So this is the tower card. Here's the tower card. So that definitely is toppling some truths perhaps, you know, bashing through um, something in life, that sort of thing, right? Uh, let me see what else we got here. Oh, this is a pretty one. So this is one of those angel cards, traditionally speaking. So temperance, temperance is ruled by Saint Michael, the archangel, the highest angel in heaven. Um, so we've got, you know, rainbow up here with a beautiful starry sky. His face is all stars and he's got sort of a crown of roses on top. And then we've got the crescent moon here. We got those googly eyes back, which might be different stages of the moon as well. We've got a hummingbird here. Um, what else we've got? Well, temperance is always, you know, in the traditional rider weight deck, temperance is pouring water from one cup to the other. Now in my gilded deck that I use as my working deck, um, in my temperance card, they're sending fire to one cup and water to the other cup and they're going back and forth between fire and water and yet not pushing or putting each other out the water's not putting the fire out the fire's not you know boiling up the water or anything like that so in this deck they've also got fire and water and going back and forth between two horns so interesting there you know drinking horns or horns of plenty um, that sort of thing and then we've got blue skies We've got the sun and the moon, or one of the googly eyes, and then we've got two more googly eyes, so maybe the four phases of the sun, even though there's no full moon there, um, or the moon, I mean, sorry. Um, so this is the death card. Again, you know, very much like the god Janus of looking backwards and forwards. Um, you've got the, the reapers, um, cutting thing there. I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> um, but yeah, interesting card. There's a lot of suns on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight suns. One, two, three, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I can't. No, nine. Nine suns. Okay, that makes more sense. So there's nine suns on this card. And again, nines are about completion. A phase is over. The sun is setting and coming out right at the same time because it's setting over here but then there's full suns over here no moons in this card this is all about suns and setting suns and then you've got a butterfly or a moth kind of thing both transformative um, animals or creatures you've got a snake down here and then you've got like this looks more like an animal as opposed to a human. So you've got one side that's sort of more animal and one side that's kind of human looking. So we all have that animal instinct in us. So very, very interesting um, deck. Lots, lots of color. Exciting because there's lots of red and yellows. He uses, the Rider Waite uses a lot of blues and yellows as well and uh, some red and he uses a lot of those colors too blues and reds and yellows but he uses it whoop, <laughs> um, in a different way and it comes across very differently so like I said this deck will stretch your intuitive brain a little or that part of your brain so don't be afraid to you know get this deck bond with it first so you this is definitely a deck you will need to work with a little bit on its own you know, I, I do have a video about binding a deck to you and you're never supposed to get a deck and just pull it out of the box and, you know, use it right away kind of thing for readings. It's kind of like, you know, having a friend over who who does something like, you know, doctors as a, as a for instance. You're having a doctor over 
for a dinner party and the first thing you do is go, Doc, you know, this hurts. Can you take a look? Like they're not there to, you know, do medical things right away, right? Um, so what this deck I find is, is that it, you should always definitely bind a deck to you. So that means that you're um, spending some time with it. You cleanse it, of course, because you don't know, even in the manufacturing, you know, what the people were like when they were creating this deck. Um, maybe they were having a bad day and some of that rubbed off on the deck, whatever it might be, right? So definitely bind the deck to you. Check out my video where I talk about binding the tarot deck to you. It's under my playlist of lessons of tarot. It's one of the first ones that I do because it's one of the first things you should do with any deck that you plan on doing readings with. Bind it to you. Get And in those days that you're binding it to you, what you're doing is you're also looking at it. You're looking at each card individually. You're shuffling it. You're pulling a couple of cards, not to read, just to meditate on and get to know what the vibe of the deck is like, what the energy of the deck is like, that sort of thing. King of Pentacles, he's a little double, that King of Pentacles. <laughs> so when you bind it to you, then you'll get much truer readings from it and the intuitiveness comes naturally a lot more naturally when you've bonded it to you so you're not supposed to take a deck and just read it right out of the box i love this there's a lot of um gender fluidity in this deck and there's a lot of really strong powerful kind of female images like this one is the knave of pentacles and it just kind of reminded me of that uh spanish artist um who had the eyebrow Frida, I believe her name was. And, you know, she was very powerful in the way she commanded herself. So this card just immediately struck that for me. And, you know, no shame. No shame at all. There she is. Or he. Because they've got a mustache as well as an eyebrow. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, okay, cool. That's awesome. You know, and again, more powerful kind of female imagery here. You know, they, they're not taking any crap kind of thing. And it's, I like it. I like it a lot. But again, it's a deck you're going to have to get to know. You're not going to be able to pull this out of the box and just read it. You have to get to know your deck. And you have to do that with every deck. Very rarely can you just pull it out of the box. And you'll find, oh, you know, this means different in this one kind of thing. So just to give you an idea of what some of these cards look like I'm just going through them as I'm speaking so definitely check out my binding your tarot deck to yourself because once it does that it knows your energy it's less likely to pick up and attach to other energy no matter who you're reading how down in the dumps or how angry they might be um, so it protects your deck as well it protects you so that then you don't pick up on that energy like and have it attached to you it's okay to pick up on the energy when a client comes into me and they're very distressed or upset or angry. You know, I pick up on the energy, but my deck doesn't take it home and nor do I. And it's because I bind my decks to me every time if I plan on working with them. Um, so sometimes I have to put a deck aside and go, okay, I'm not working with you because I haven't bonded with you yet and I don't feel it's the time yet. So... There's another interesting one. Um, so check him out on uh, Instagram. He's got quite an interesting, a lot of this art is very much like him. And I'll put a link to uh, his Instagram. Uh, I'll put a link to um, if you want to get this deck for yourself. Um, it's a fun deck to kind of work with, um, especially if you've been doing tarot for a little while, or if you've learned tarot and you kind of want to move on beyond, you know, the Rider Waite or you want to, do something different kind of thing. Sometimes it's, you know, hard to find those decks that kind of excite you and rev up your mind. There's the King of Swords. He's, you know, sacrificing himself kind of thing. Interesting. Oh, I like the Queen of Swords. She's fighting um, dragons. And she's doing it blindfolded. She's just that good. <laughs> That's a powerful card. I love strong female imagery and cards. Three of Wands. There you go. So just to give you an idea, here's one of the scary cards. Three of Swords. I do a video on the scary cards 
as well. The Three of Swords never looks fun. It's always, you know, a heart being pierced by three swords. Um, so just to give you an idea of what this kind of looks like, and if you want to order your own, I'll put the link down below. It does help me continue to do these videos, so I appreciate your support. Even if you click on the link and you decide to buy another deck instead, it still helps me out as I'm an associate for Amazon. Um, and I'll put my links for my social media if you want to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, or um, I've got my Etsy shop or Twitter. That's the other one. <laughs> um, anyways, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this sort of review of the uh, new tarot deck I've got, the Tarot del Fiego. Fuego. So I say I like the pictures better than I can say the name. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Uh, subscribe to my channel because I'd love to get more subscribers. And tick that bell if you want to get notifications when new videos go up. All right, I'm Lady Rose of Goddess Garage. Thank you so much for joining me.